Hi, everyone, and welcome to yet another special edition version of the data point. My name is Peter Jarek. I am the head of GSMA intelligence and I have Emmanuel Coulter with me. Emmanuel and I were both at FutureNet World uh, just last week. Hey, Emmanuel. Hi, Peter. Hi, everyone. And, and what I'd like to do is, is just, just wrap up what we thought of the event. Uh, it's, it's for those of you who don't know, FutureNet World is, is just one of a series of events uh, that have been taking place, I think, for, for the last five years and traditionally focused on operations, focused on automation, and the, the global edition was held just last week in London. It's been a number of our analysts there and uh, a lot going on. I think, you know, we all know operations, automation are particularly important, but we've seen the event sort of trying to broaden its focus, broaden its scope, pulling in things like Open RAN, Things like what are taking place in terms of open and APIs, monetization of 5G, obviously operations and automation, they all fit in there. So it's not like they're sort of going, going off piste, but the show becomes uh, a lot more interesting as, as it's expanded. This year, GSMA Intelligence was one of the official research partners. So thanks to, uh, thanks to everyone at FutureNet for, for having us as, as part of the family, managed to, uh, managed to to moderate a couple of the keynote panels and i think before i, I turn it over to some of the questions here and, and start talking with emmanuel i'll say for those of you who, who haven't been to the event one of the key things that you hear from everyone who goes and i think part of the reasons why why we send a good team is that great operator representation right the, the number of operator ctos number of operators who are present you really get to hear from some of the folks who are actually making the decisions and and really deciding what's it and have good insight into what's going on in the network. So, so that's it for those of you, uh, just a bit of a background. So now let me, let me dig into some questions. Emmanuel, you were there, I think you were there both days. Uh, you, you sat through, uh, you endured the, the keynotes that, that I moderated. What was your biggest takeaway from the event? The, the one thing that you came away and said, okay, I learned this, or, or this is the, this is the, the, the most major thing or, or the one thing that, that you really remember this, this far away. Thanks, Peter. Um, to be honest, it's pretty hard to pick just one. And my official title is lead analyst of, of network innovation and sustainability. So, and I have to have to mention sustainability and energy efficiency here because it, it become a top priority for mobile operators there. And, and you could hear how it got so important and, and one of the most important factor and not just because of Usually energy is the third most important operational cost for a mobile operator, but but also uh, these days other uh, stakeholders such as investors and, and, and customers are, are very keen to hear about um, emission and, and energy efficiency of a mobile operator. So I believe it was one of the most important takeaway for me. And the other part was that as you mentioned, it was a very operational um, event, so not much about remote surgery or, or kind of visionary 5G use cases, but, but it was about how to do 5G efficiently. And we reached this kind of phase that um, where US and China is all about, according to GSM intelligence, over 30% uh, for China, 5G penetration, and, and US it's even more, Europe, um, many countries over 20 percent so we reached the phase where we need to deploy 5g and operate 5g efficiently and and that was my other takeaway that that, that operators very curious to hear about and not just about technical details but also how to change their operations structure to be more um, efficient in the 5g era yeah it was it was definitely front and center in a lot of the conversations, front and center in a lot of the presentations. So 100%, I, th I think sustainability was was definitely there. And I'll just say for, from my own perspective, my biggest takeaway was you know, the focus on disaggregation. And I think that, that permeated a lot of the conversations, right? From what does that mean for running a network? What does that mean in terms of multi-vendor? Do we need automation? You know, is automation a solution for multi-vendor or is it something that has to deal with multi-vendor? How do we think about what that means for building networks? 
And, and how do we think about what that means for composable networks? I think a number of times we heard you know, some operators saying, if we're disaggregating, it really should be sort of piece parts, cookie cutter, uh, where, where we can mix and match. And it's not, right? Even to the point of operations of, if I work with vendor X, I'm developing something specific for, for my network, someone else should be able to take some of that work and leverage it in their network, and yet they probably can't. And, um, you know, I think there's some issues about how that works with procurement and how that works in terms of developing IP when you've developed something with, with a vendor. But I think that the focus on disaggregation was really, uh, for me, particularly, particularly key. And what was your biggest surprise, Peter? I mean, a lot of things these days, but what was the most shocking for you or what, what did you learn which was the most interesting for from your perspective? Yeah, and, and, it, and it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, I think, so, so it was a surprise to the extent that, that the discussion around skills and maybe that was that was one of those overarching themes. But I was was excited to see sort of the the the, the skills expertise become you know one of the the issues. And, and again, a, a little bit of a of a surprise because I think there is this interesting tension of how do operations and, and automation in particular fit in with skills, right? So is automation something that that really you're going to have a difficult time implementing unless you have the right skills or is automation a solution for skills gaps and i think you you saw that addressed head on in a number of the conversations even with a few of the operators talking about how you know they've got college graduate programs and they're trying to bring in new new people and you know and if anything was surprising it was really this this forthright sort of uh, discussions of, hey, we really need to do this from the beginning because if we're thinking about how do we take an IT person and recognizing that we need more IT skills in telco operations, if, if we have a choice of taking an IT person and teaching them telco skills or a telco person and teaching them IT skills, which is going to be easier, right? And the recognition that there's probably a lot more to gain for a person who has telco background teaching them IT than an IT person teaching them telco and how do we engage people early on to explain that value and I, I think that 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 level of um forthrightness if there was one place where it wasn't quite forthright it, it was this idea of great this applies if i'm a vodafone if i'm a bt if i'm an orange if i'm a name brand and can attract those those college graduates but how that works for the the third operator in a three operator market or the fourth operator the third operator in a fourth four operator market how you pull in those new skills and, and you need to rely on your suppliers i think that was sort of maybe not quite addressed and, and something that we need to think about as we, we look beyond the, the top tier operators but that was just me i know i've been trying to think about the skill side of things a lot you're surprised what was what, what surprised you uh, emmanuel yeah, uh, by the way, I agree very much on this this talent and skill set point of view. Also, um, if you want to gather these kind of IT related skill sets, you need to compete and and recruiting in in the IT space is is can be of course be a completely new challenge for operators as as the two areas is converging. Um, for me, the biggest surprise was the of course we hear about a lot in MWC and almost every event these days about automation. But here I really liked how operators want to, and I heard this more from, from, from more operators to, to rethink their operations and kind of this change, this ticketing mindset that you raise a ticket, you solve a problem. And in the era of fully autonomous network or automated network, you don't necessary need to actually you don't really need to follow this kind of mindset and and you don't need to raise ticket and it's not just automating the ticketing system but rather coming up with a whole new you can call it zero touch or you can call it level five or whatever but but how you how you can completely rethink this whole mindset and not just automate the old one but kind of like as Schumpeter said the the destroying innovation that you're destroying this kind of ticketing way and coming up with something completely new. That was, for instance, uh, for me, very good to see. And also that I start to see operators um, quantifying how they're, uh, where are they at, in, in this journey? So I think um, it was Deutsche Telekom who had the metric and, and they published it in their um, annual report that, that 
amount of the percentage of their processes which has been already uh, automated or qualified. I think it's very good to see that we can start to you know measure it and, and then compare it. So we need to come up also with new metrics how to to measure uh, this process. And I was I mean I'll say on that note, um, it, it was surprising but also encouraging to see a recognition the discussion around automation in terms of being nuanced. Right. You know I'll go back to similar to the skills thing of do you need skills to do automation or does automation take the place of skills? I think there was a lot of great nuanced conversation on automation in terms of how does automation support the move to maybe disaggregated and, and, and multi-vendor type solutions versus how do, when I think about disaggregation and when I think about the move towards IT, how does that make automation more possible, right? And so it is a, you know, those two things fit together and, and how does service automation and network automation fit together? Um, so we, that was good, right? I think we can agree that that was a good point. Sustainability was a good point. A lot of good stuff discussed. What what was and what, we'll end with this question. What did you think was the biggest miss, right? What what didn't you hear about that you're like, wow, I, I'm just waiting to hear from it, and there was a huge missed opportunity from from your perspective. Uh oh, uh oh. I'll say. Sorry, I think it's 2023, and I'm still sometimes unmute myself. Um, so for me. And I was expecting way more thing about open run. And we've seen operators who are at the forefront of their their journey um, to, to, to desegregation and aggregation. And I was expecting a lot more on open run. And 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 in GSM intelligence, we monitor um, the number of open run deployment and launches and, and tests. And we could actually see that 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 there is um, some 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 change, but I was expecting way more thing about disaggregation uh, from these operators there. Yeah, and um, open ran. I mean, it was it was good to hear open ran brought up, but I think you're right. It, it wasn't front center. And I can tell you even, and this is not, you know, this was if you look at what the original agenda called for. Let's say the the day two keynote, the first. The first day two keynote, I think, was supposed to be focused on open RAN. And I know some of the operators were like, let's 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 pull that back a bit. And so it is uh, particularly since you've got great evangelists like like Rakuten who are saying, look, part of the value of open RAN is it allows us to automate. Right. And and it that allows us to automate, which which is a you know completely plays into the the focus of the event. And so yeah, I think I think from my perspective, if there was one miss. It was or big miss. It was not hearing more from from the enterprise or from the customers. There was obviously a big discussion in terms of you know how we can enable new enterprise revenue streams, new B two B revenues, how automation fits into that, how that's the direction we want to go. But I, we just heard from a lot of operators who have a lot of great insights in terms of what it takes to make that happen. Hearing from the customers is so critical and, and and i've said this over and over that you know we need to get out there and experience right i think i think everyone in an operator who is architecting those solutions needs to put themselves in the place of an enterprise what it's like to provision a service to sign up for a service to pay for a service so they understand how this works at a very real basis right anyone an operator mm -hmm. who's thinking about new consumer services needs to put themselves in the place of that consumer and so i think hearing from those customers is so critical and, and it's not easy Right. I mean, we 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 all know here that finding speakers, finding the people who can talk intelligently about it is not easy. But when you do it, it's so, so super valuable. So I, I hope we see that more next year. Yeah, uh, so agree. with with that, any final thoughts, Emmanuel? No, I think it was a great, great, great event in general and, and especially very high um, concentration of, of mobile operators and their their management board and their C-level. So I think it was a great event and looking forward to go next year as well. It was even sunny. It was a wonderfully late spring, uh, sunny Wednesday and Thursday here in London. So I, I think hopefully that will encourage people to come back next year. Obviously, there's no promise of, of what it'll be like, like the next year, but the fingers crossed. Well, thank you all for joining Emmanuel. Thanks for, for the insights. Thanks to everyone for watching. Uh, 
We've been doing these more often, recapping some of the events that we've gone to. If you'd like us to do some more of it, please let us know. If there are events that you want us to go to and put on our calendar, please let us know. And in the meantime, thanks again. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll be talking in the next one. Bye, everyone.